Hello, everyone, and welcome to My Thoughts Exactly. I'm your host, Charles Barron. Here's a question for you. What do New York writer and famed rock on tour Michael Musto, WWE wrestler Fred Rosser, and a Greek chorus have in common? Can't figure it out? I'll tell you. They're all part of Theality TV's new hit series, The Little House on the Ferry, the making of an off-Broadway musical. This hysterical 10-episode show is streaming right now on Broadway On Demand. It is so funny. And I just happen to have one of the stars of that show today on our show at the Zoom table. And I'll be speaking with R.J. McGee. He's really terrific in the show. But before we head over to the Zoom table to speak with RJ, let's take a look at one of the scenes from the show. This Fred Rosser situation is very unusual for me because I don't usually put people in my shows who don't um, sing or dance. Let's see, where is he? He's right here. Um, as far as headshots go, this would be very unusual for a theater production. They would usually have a lot more clothes on. So, Randall, we have four of, you know, our top four. They're all very different. Mm -hmm. um, here's our token straight boy. Mm -hmm. Gay, gay, gay. You got me playing oh, Jake. Let me see that. You got um, me playing Jake. I'm going to... It's got to be compatible. No. That, we will decide who's that's compatible Timothy. with you. That yeah, that's Timothy. Right. I thought you said Randall. These are the Randalls here. Well, if any of them, I would choose Mike. He's... Bubbly, he's got he's got it, the it factor. For she and he, for she and she, don't say it won't pass. Okay, noted. Now back to the real casting. Hello, RJ. Thank you so much for being on the show today to talk about the new Theality Theality TV. 10 episode new show, The Little House on the Ferry, the making of an off-Broadway musical. This is one funny show and you are very funny in it, my friend. Thank you. Yes, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the production and everything, uh, give us a little bit of, about the story about Little House on the Ferry and the making and, and what the Ality TV is doing here with it. Don't give too much away. Absolutely. And first, I just wanted to thank you for having me. I'm really excited about this. Um, so Theality TV is a reality show about the making of an off-Broadway musical and the musical that the reality show documents the journey of is called Little House on the Ferry, which is an original musical that documents a group of friends on Fire Island the night before marriage equality passes in the state of New York in 2011. This is before the it was passed nationally in 2015. Right. And it's all original music, a really campy, heartfelt, joyous, quirky. <laughs> But the real show is the journey of putting on this musical. And that's what Theality TV is all about. The reality show starts with all of us, this, the production team, the creative team getting together, having auditions. Antonio! This is the oh, most wow. people we have. Antonio. Yeah. It comes down. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And remember, yeah, yeah, we yeah, also yeah, have yeah. Pasqualino, mm. the Italian. Now, here's a thought. How about Pasqualino for Timothy? We would call him Miracle Bro. Oh, 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 oh. Because I talked I, to him on the phone. Oh, well, what did that? 
feel he, for you. I wish I could do more of an Italian accent because he went, hmm. <laughs> That sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that was good. The first read through, costume fittings, rehearsals, music rehearsals. So many of us have been a part of theater productions where we're backstage or we're in the dressing room and we say to ourselves, man, there's a lot of crazy stuff going down. I wish this was all being filmed yeah. by someone. And so we finally did that. And we had a full camera crew with us at all times, and they caught it all as as, as it was all going down. But uh, how did you get involved in the project? Was it uh, through people you knew, or so you know? Every every musical or play, you need a cast, right? That's the first thing, really. You need actors, and in some projects, you need a casting director. Um, and so I've been a casting director. I've had my own company, R. Jamie Gee Casting, since 2018. And I've also been a talent manager for Jamie Baker Management since 2015. So I sort of specialize as being that liaison between a creative team and helping facilitate their vision and help them find actors. So Rob Gold, who you will see on Theality TV, was the mastermind behind all of this. And he really needed a casting director. So he posted the position in a couple different places. And remember, this is also going to be a reality show. So the entire casting process was going to be documented on film. So the person who fulfilled the role of the casting director on Theality TV also had to have some sort of impetus or interest in being on television. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always wanted to be on a reality show. So it was just the perfect fit. And remember anyone who wanted to audition for Little House on the Ferry had to be okay with both their audition being filmed and then being filmed for the reality show. So you were a casting director in real life playing a casting director in the show. Yep. It's really funny. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. It was very stressful, as you can see mm -hmm. from uh, from the reality show. I mean, there were some times where I was like, I don't know if this is if we're going to reach the finish line here. As we were saying um, off camera, it's beautifully filmed. It's beautifully edited. And it really tells a very compelling story about these people coming together to put on a show. You have Fred Rosser in the show. And yes. For people watching this today, Fred Rosser was the first openly gay WWE wrestler who came out in 2013, and he's yes. actually the lead of the musical within the sh with the musical in your reality show. So that he's a very interesting character. Yes, he was thrust upon us, as you will see, I think, at the end of the first episode, leading into the second episode, by our financier Icavelli who offered Rob $10,000 and a theater to put on a musical in just a couple weeks. And one of the requirements for that was that Rob had to cast Fred Rosser to play the role of Jake in Little House on the Ferry. Now, this was a man who had never sung before. He had never danced before. And depending on whether you think wrestling is like theater, he may or may not have acted before. So that alone was quite an experience. And for anyone who's watched the show or is going to watch the show, you know that he also brought along his mother yes. to many of the rehearsals, whose name is Robin, and she's a character in her own right. And so um, I actually thought that Fred did a beautiful job in the show in the end, especially for someone that it was their first musical, but he really threw himself into the entire process. His nickname is Mr. No Days Off. Well, Kirk, who my husband, Kirk, who is a theater theatrical lighting designer, has, yes. has a very discerning uh, eye for any sort of entertainment and theatrical yep. entertainment. And when he watched the first episode, he loved it. So I'm just putting that out there. And we ended up binge watching it and we couldn't, it, it when one episode ended, we wanted to watch another one. Now, I'm not a big reality TV show fan. Like five minutes of the Kardashians can go a long way, but right. this kept me wanting to watch. And I think it's because you had a uh, deadline and a goal to put on a musical. Right. Do you think that's what makes it so engaging? I think so. And I think the people really made it engaging as well. 
So as the casting director, I was tasked with finding people that were really right for these roles in the musical Little House on the Ferry, but that I, but that I also thought would be interesting people. And that makes a big difference for a project like this. They had to be people who had personalities that really popped. This is the guy with the arms, right? He's got nice arms. We found actors who were really interesting people, but that were also really talented and really great for Little House on the Ferry. Yeah, well, some of there is one moment in the show that I wanted to touch base with you on or touch on. It was the moment with the costume designer. It got kind of a little uncomfortable. I don't want to give anything away, but there was like an altercation between Rob and the costume designer who was, it wasn't a great match. And I was really uncomfortable. I thought that was going to come to uh, blows and they were going to start punching each other. Right. How much of that was scripted? Everything was real. Oh, wow. This show is 100% unscripted, but that moment with Rob and the costume designer just happened to happen when it happened and the cameras happened to be there and, you know, sparks flew, but uh, it did make for very gripping television, that's for sure. Now, the, the, the musical that you are making in the reality show could be a standalone and, and is a standalone Isn't musical. It fabulous, yeah, it's a great show. It's a great show, the music is uh, fantastic. I yes. think uh, Tim Moss, who I know, who's also in the show, who plays yep. Donnie in the musical yes. within the musical, he yep. an 11 o'clock number that just breaks your heart about an know, Isn't game. it fabulous? Yeah. Fabulous. And um, so my, my question to you is, will this musical ever be seen in a theater as a standalone musical? Well, we would love it to be. And if anyone out there is interested in Exploring that further with us, you can go to robwritesmusic.com, R-O-B-W-R-I-T-E-S-M-U-S-I-C.com. And we have the music, we have the script, we have the score, and anyone who wants to help us put it up, we'd be happy to do that. I think it'd be amazing on a gay cruise. I think it would be great in, in your uh, town of South Florida uh, to have it run maybe for, you know, open-ended, you know, something that runs, you know, a couple days a week, you know, during the season, in the winter season, you know what I mean? There's, it has a lot of potential, it has a lot of heart, and... Um, I want to talk about some of the themes in the show for the audience that's watching today. What I loved about it is there were some classical themes that I don't know if Rob, who when he developed the musical within the musical was going down that road, you had a Greek chorus of three women behind the, right. the main characters and they played multi roles. And at times there was a lot of like homages to different uh, cultural things. Like uh, Kirk picked up the Wizard of Oz where you Big had time, yeah. J. Fred Rosser, the, the wrestler actor. He was from Kansas, like Dorothy. And then uh, there's a scene on the beach where, there, where the Greek chorus becomes seagulls with these menacing beaks. And I think that was kind of like the flying monkeys in the Wizard of Oz right. or, or, or the, the three witches in the Scottish play. Were these things yes. intentional and discussed at all? It was all intentional. And it's really interesting because Rob would have some character meetings with Fred Rosser, this was off camera, and he would go through some of these references that are in the script. And Fred had never even seen the Wizard of Oz, if you can imagine that. So he would really have to break it down for him and say, you know, this is who Carol Channing is, who is referenced in the show. Uh, this is who Lady Gaga is, who's referenced in the show. Anything gay you can think of is, is referenced at some point. But some of it I had to be clued in, into because I've never been to Fire Island. I don't know if you've spent any significant amount of time there, but you I have too not. Much, too much time. I bet, yeah. <laughs> well. You know, the musical is really inspired by Rob Gold, who had a condo on Fire Island for many years, his summers on Fire Island and how meaningful they were to him personally and the friendships that he made and that entire sort of microcosm, right? Fire Island's its own little world. 
Who else didn't we mention? Michael Musto is in the show. He's the host. Michael Musto is our host. He's sort of the Andy Cohen of the project. He came in a couple of times and conducted interviews and just poked his head in. And then he hosted our reunion, which is the last episode of the series. They're always my favorite parts of a reality show is when the cast comes back together in a semicircle and hashes everything out. And boy, did we hash it out. <laughs> Now, Rob Gould is going to be looking for more musicals to put in the next theality TV making of a musical. So you're yes. that you and the group are acti actively searching new musicals, right? So we yeah, can we would love to do a second season of theality TV, but with a new musical. So the first season was Little House on the Ferry, and the second one could be a completely new musical in a completely different city with a completely different group of actors and starting the whole process all over again because as we all know not one theater experience is the same let's get more people watching this so people watching watching your show um so i want to say that it's on broadway on demand and i know a few yep. of my viewers are gonna say i don't get that but listen it's the first two episodes are free free completely free, free. what's free these days nothing you get nothing. the first, first two episodes free and <laughs> Once you can also life. watch the first two episodes on YouTube for free. Okay. So there's no excuse on that one. No, but then when you get sucked in and really love it, which you will, because I promise you we were, it's only $3.99 to watch the rest of them. $3.99, not $3.99 an episode, $3.99 for the entire thing. It's worth it. It's It was so entertaining. I encourage all the people watching this to go to Broadway On Demand and just stream uh, when they're on, put in Theality TV and they'll get it right away. Yes, Theality TV. And Broadway On Demand, you can pull it up just on your laptop, but it's also an app. So if you have a smart TV, you can pull it up on your smart TV, just like you watch Netflix every night. And you know what was so refreshing? I've missed live theater in this yeah, pandemic this is it. age. And it was so refreshing to be back in a live theater through your show to see singers, dancers, rehearsals. I'm an actor, so I know I've missed that terribly, walking up those steps into the rehearsal room. And you bring it all back so beautifully during this. And we wrapped principal photography on this um, the middle of February. Right. So we were unbelievably lucky in terms of getting this in right before the shutdown. And you know, all these people that are doing Zoom readings and Zoom whatever, this isn't Zoom. This is live and fully costumed, fully set, fully musicked. You know, this is really going to scratch that itch that we all um, have had as we've missed uh, the experience of going to see a musical. Yes, and it really does satisfy that that void in in right. for me and for Kirk. We were like, yes, we miss this so much. This is making us laugh. Exactly. So RJ, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for sharing the stories about the, the show. I'm going to encourage everyone I know to watch it. We'll be sending this out there and it's Theality TV on Broadway On Demand. Yep. The, the Little House on the Ferry, the making of an off-Broadway musical. Thanks yep. so much. And say hello to Tim Moss for me when you speak to him. Oh, I will. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye now. You take bye -bye. care. Bye-bye. Take care. I hope you enjoyed that interview with RJ. And remember, The Little House on the Ferry, the first two episodes stream free on Broadway On Demand, and the rest are only $3.99. Join us next week when I'll take you to the Flamingo Auto Group South, the Lambda Car Club in Wilton Manors. They meet once a month and they bring their vintage antique autos to the parking lot there. And I'll be showing you some of the old Corvairs and Stingrays and Mustangs from the 1960s. They're really beautiful, fun cars. So join us and we'll have a great time on site in Wilton Manors. Thanks for watching the show, everybody. You're all terrific. I'm wishing you a great week ahead. If you like the show, please subscribe. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And thanks to all my new subscribers last week. Bye. I think him. I think him. I don't, I don't see, I would have done him. Uh, Fred, what do you think? Why? Tiebreaker. Because uh, he's the Is sexy one. Tiebreaker.